Religious people like to say that the family that prays together stays together. Because when they hear that, they think it means religion is a unifying force in families. Of course, when you and I hear it, we know it really means religious people often shun their family members for apostasy. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'll freely admit that people shun their family members for secular reasons, too. Right. I'm sure there are atheist families that have disowned sons and daughters for being gay or being trans or marrying somebody of the wrong race. But it's hardly exculpatory for religion when I point out how it has the same effects as bigotry. Right. This has always struck me as one of the most disingenuous claims that religion makes. They wrap themselves in the cloak of family so shamelessly that the word itself has become all but synonymous with their propaganda. Right. They're focused on the family. They have family values. The secular progressives in Hollywood are undermining the family, but they're going to protect it. And they say all that shit with a straight face, knowing good and damn well that nothing splits up families quite like religion. You know, sure, I'll admit it works when it works, right? As long as everybody in the family toes the religious line, I'm sure religion does a great job in unifying families. But you know, that's, that's the default setting. That's just the natural fucking state of things. You live with your family, or at least you did. You're genetically programmed to favor your kin. Family sticking together is literally written into our DNA, and yet religion will straight-facedly take credit for it, right? It, it's like calling religion a great sleep aid based on the fact that 100% of religious people sleep. But of course, that analogy falls way short because religion doesn't have the potential to entirely deprive you of sleep. Right. At least Lisa Simpson's anti tiger rock didn't turn into a tiger when it malfunctioned. But for all their braggadocious claims about faith's power of family adhesion, even the slightest tug reveals that its glue is weaker than a fucking post it note. Hell, you don't even have to leave the religion to watch it fall apart. For a lot of families, it's enough to simply ask a question about it or, or make some minor random violation of it. I've seen entire family gatherings ruined because of an incautiously uttered, God damn it. And yet, this wedge. This seismic disruption that has dissolved the mortar of more families than Richard Dawson, this universal solvent that separates families at a rate that the Department of Homeland Security can only dream of, will look you in the eyes and tell you with a straight face that its goal is to keep families together. Of course, if you think I'm judging religion too harshly and am overstating its propensity to divide families, I invite you to check my work at Anywhere in America this time next week. Go ahead, just drop in on Thursday, any house with the lights on, and watch that self-proclaimed cultural emulsifier in action. Sure, you'll probably hear more Thanksgiving arguments about politics than religion, but given the evangelical stranglehold on policy of the Trump administration, I don't even know if that's a relevant distinction anymore. I mean, you know, maybe I'm wrong. I, I guess it's theoretically possible that somebody out there has a perfectly pleasant Thanksgiving get together with the extended family where the conversation remains cordial, even when the rational people aren't bleeding their tongues as though their teeth were George Washington's surgeon. I've never seen one of those, never been to one of those, never heard about one of those in the tales of the wandering bards. But there's no rule of physics saying it's impossible, I guess. And, and, and it's perfectly possible to ruin a Thanksgiving without resorting to religion. I know that. I, I come from a long line of Lions fans. But for an awful lot of people listening, the price that they're going to have to pay for an amicable Thursday next week will be their intellectual integrity. Right. When Uncle Bob explains how trans kids exist because they took prayer out of schools and Aunt Kathy recounts the harrowing tale of seeing a Muslim at Piggly Wiggly and Cousin Darlene tells you how much better her Morgellons is now that her chakras are well aligned. And Grandpa Ed asks that we take a moment to thank Jesus for a meal that Jesus didn't put in on. You'll just sit there nodding stiffly and wondering how much more it is shit you have to listen to before you're having a worse day than a fucking turkey. And then. After a full day of that, or, or even a full weekend, whatever you poor souls have to suffer through, you get to drive home, you get to slip in your headphones, and you get to listen to us talk about Pat Robertson blaming family divisions on drag queen story hour. Right, but to his credit, as pervasive as this pro-family lie is among Christians, it's something that Jesus disagreed with him about. In fact, he was surprisingly honest about where this was all going. Matthew 10, 35, 36, quote, I have come to turn a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. A man's enemies will be the members of his own household, end quote. And I got to be honest with you, that is the best description of a modern Thanksgiving dinner that I have ever heard. <laughs>